All right. Good evening, New Creation. Um, we are going to be lighting the uh, fifth Advent ca candle tonight, all of them. So you can go ahead and start. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Let's pray. Lord, I invite your peace to rule my heart. As I end this year and reflect on your many gifts you have given me, let my heart be encouraged with the truth that you are a good God. I thank you for sending your son to die for me. I thank you for the peace I have through you. May my words and actions be ones that glorify you. Amen. Sorry for the vibrations if you're watching the live stream, moving it around. Hopefully you can see most of the stuff. Let's worship the Lord together.
Father, as we come before you, we're singing about peace on earth, and that song was written at a war-torn time. Lord, help us to remember that in the midst of all of the sin and the insanity and the stupid of the world, we can have peace that is beyond the world. I ask that you would meet us here this evening as we gather, whether online or in this space, as we worship you, that it wouldn't be about us, it wouldn't be about what we look like to anybody else, but it would be about you and me and me and you and us together as people seeking you. Jesus, speak to us, we ask in your precious name.
Father, thank you that you are the God of all creation. You are the one that is above all, through all, and in all. Speak to our hearts, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This evening, as we come to celebrate, I remind people all the time that if you follow the Jewish calendar, the lunar calendar, it is Christmas Eve. Okay? It is already Christmas Eve. So, happy Christmas Eve. We finished the series tonight, very briefly, that we've been doing all of Advent with the skit guys and Joel tonight, the director. So focus your attention on the screen and let's hear from the word of the Lord. This is the story of a ragtag bunch of church members who set out to perform a Christmas play and the director who tried his hardest to just keep it all together. The glory of Christmas. Our annual Christmas show is tonight, and all the hard work, the blood, sweat, and tears comes down to this very moment. And like, like any show, there's going to be some last-minute snafus. Um, like, like, for example, my middle-aged Mary. She's been having contractions for about six, 16 hours. My Joseph hasn't memorized all his lines. Uh, Amy? Mary, my, <laughs> my dear Mary. Been a long journey. My wise man is convinced that the nativity set will collapse. And my shepherd can't find a lemon for his tea. Articulatory agility is a marvelous ability, manipulating with dexterity that. We are telling the most beautiful and important story that's ever been told about an event that changed the world. We've lost the lamb. Mm -hmm. Quick, everyone make lamb noises. Call her back to the flock. He knows the lamb's a dog, right? Medical experts actually do not recommend this method for uh, dealing with panic attacks. But my mom recommends lavender behind the ears. Get away from me. I'm calling an ambulance. I think I'll be fine. It's for me. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Thank you guys so much for coming. All right, places, everyone. It's time. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, and unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. I have this long-held tradition, I guess you could call it. Every year during the performance, I, uh, I step off the stage and leave the building. I just want God to do what God does. And the shepherds came with haste 
and they found, found Mary, Mary and Joseph, Joseph and, the and the babe lying in the manger. It doesn't matter where you see the nativity story, whether it's on a street corner or, or in a church or even on your neighbor's mantle. When you see it, you, you have to consider it then and there. Are you willing to kneel at the manger? Will you believe in the miracle of Christmas, the glory of Christmas? Trust that this is the way that God chose to save us all. And all who heard it wondered at those things, which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and worshiping God for all the things that they have seen and heard as it was said unto them. Amen. So if you haven't been with us for this series, you got to go check it out. Some of them are, are absolutely hilarious, and they always have a point. Mary is a middle-aged mom who is a middle-aged soccer mom who um, can't quit thinking about food. Whoa, check. Okay, that happened. Okay. It worked. We're good. Mary's a middle-aged soccer I wonder if the live stream still up. Just check that. Middle-aged soccer mom that can't stop thinking about food. She has two kids in college, and then she got pregnant. And was like, wow, you know, this messed up my plans. Hmm, kind of like Mary, maybe I can do this. Uh, Joseph insulted Mary accidentally because he goes, I remember you, you played bunko with my mom. <laughs> and he goes, is the age thing bad? She's like, mm, stop, stop, just stop talking. I don't want to talk to you, you know. The guy that plays the shepherd is just crazy. You know, he's just crazy. And yet it brings everything home. And then we looked at the wise man last week. The wise man that seems to know a lot of things that may or may not have pertinence to where you're at, but uh, is really has a heart of seeking the good in everything. So it fits. So tonight I'm just, I'm not going to take much time because we need to, we want to get to the candle lighting and see all your beautiful faces and candles. Um, Candle light, that is, not in candles. Um, so an aspect of this thing called the glory of Christmas. To be clear, there's this aspect that everybody can be the star. That doesn't mean it's like everybody gets a participation trophy. Okay? <laughs> Don't go there. But everybody can be a star because we're on the winning team. You get a participation trophy no matter what, but we can be on a winning team. And it's literally about doing what the star in Christmas did. It shined bright into a dark area and pointed people to the Savior. In a sense, we get to be the star that points people to the star of the whole thing, Jesus. Jesus, who is the true glory of Christmas. Have you ever noticed the description of the star in the Christmas story? We see it here in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who was born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. There was this star that pointed people to where baby Jesus was. It was the Jesus star, if you will. Some people call it that. Some say the Savior star. <clears throat> Matthew goes on a little bit later in, in chapter, uh, in his book, and he says uh, in chapter 5, verses 14 to 16, and he talks about Jesus being illuminating the world in a dark setting. It says this. You can see this on the screen too. You are the light of the world. A city and a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do the people light a lamp or put it under a basket, but on a stand that it gives light to all who are in the house. In the same way, let your shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. 
I mean, I've put that together, but isn't that what the star did over the manger? Well, actually over the stable. Joel, the director from the video that we just watched, did just what the Christmas star is meant to do. He did what he could to put everything and everybody in the store in their places so that the focus could shine on Jesus. On Jesus. So that when the play was done, everybody saw Jesus. That's what the director is supposed to do, right? Trish just finished up doing a, doing a play. Isn't the director supposed to make sure everything's in place so that the real star gets the attention at the end? That the story plays itself out? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for saying yes. That's what the director is supposed to do. <laughs> Jesus is at the center of the glory of Christmas. And, and yet everybody can be his star. Are you noticing the fun twist here? We get to be shining people, showing people to Jesus till we get to go home to be with Jesus. We get to shine like the star. We don't stop shining until we go home. Another spot in Matthew talks about the Magi or the kings again. It says this, after listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold and of frankincense and myrrh. People all over the place. See the seek the Savior in different places in life, don't they? Being his star means not giving up. Not giving up on guiding others until their paths intersect with the star. Our love motivated by Jesus is a light in a dark world. So my question is, is that you? If you're hearing my voice, listen to this. Is this you? Is, is our love motivated by Jesus lighting a dark world that helps dispel the darkness and point people to hope and peace and joy and love? Wow, that sounds familiar at Advent, doesn't it? Found in him. Thank you. I hear that. Amen. And, and, and as the Savior of the world, it's like, our, it's like the purpose statement of New Creation Church. A people illuminating the darkness so that our community can see the glory of God. We get to be the star that shines on Jesus. If we do it right, with the right heart. People need this consistently and steadily. The glory of Christmas is that you get to be his star and you help to illuminate that darkness for those that really, really need it. And you know what? Sometimes that's the person that we live with in our house. Sometimes we get lost, and sometimes we need to shine the light with one another, don't we? And just in a little bit, when we light candles, when all of these candles and lights come together, it's brighter than you might think. So what are we doing to burn brightly and keep feeding the fire during times in between times that we meet and we don't meet, so that our life is a light to others around us. What are we doing? As we live our lives as his stars pointing to the Messiah while shining brightly in whatever darkness God has allowed us to be in. And did you hear what I said? God allows us to be in darkness. God allows us to be in darkness so that we can shine and point to him. I forget that sometimes. We are on our way to being what is described in the Old Testament book of Daniel when we're there, when it says this, and those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above. And those who turn, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever Wouldn't that be cool? If we thought of ourselves the way that the book of Daniel just described those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above and those who turn many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever and ever. It kind of signs it kind of sounds like a New Testament scripture too. 
will shine like the stars in the heavens. Our role as his stars is to shine like the stars in the heavens and to point people to the star. Again, kind of like that vision statement we just said a minute ago about illuminating the darkness. And our purpose is to be salt and light in our community. Our lives can make people salty to make people thirsty for living water. And we're supposed to be a light to shine so that people can see Jesus in us. A bunch of scriptures. Three. Read them with me, if you will. For at one time you were in darkness, but now you are light in the world. Walk as children of light. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And we have something more sure, the prophetic word to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you might proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And finally, for God, so, for God who said, let light shine out of the darkness has shown in our hearts to give light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Whew. If you want those scriptures, I can give them to you. If you need to be reminded that our purpose is to shine bright at Christmas and after Christmas and every day in between all the days of the big three, you know, Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost. You were a little bit early in the Pentecost crying out there, man, just a little bit, you know? But that's okay. We're getting there. That's good. I pray that as we shine Jesus' star, we shine as Jesus' star this Christmas. My hope is that we shine and we encourage each other so much that as we gather regularly, our light can shine even brighter because of being together. And that by living this way, a lot of people, wherever we live, and right here in this neighborhood, are going to be drawn to the presence of the one who came to save us, Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for the powerful blessing that you allow us to be a part of. Lord Jesus, still our hearts, we pray. And give us the opportunity to quietly and reverently and loudly worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. As we begin singing this song, um, I know I told Pastor Sue she wasn't going to do anything tonight. But, but could you just light the first candle off the Christ candle and start passing it? That's easy, okay? after we start the music because we're going to kill all the lights in the place well, don't kill them. and we're going to pass the light of Christ around and then I'm going to ask you as we sing this song to maybe just kind of make a semicircle here okay I know that's kind of weird but go with me if you're online you're welcome to grab a candle or a flashlight at home the kids should have glow sticks okay so we don't set our neighbors on fire it's always good um so let's worship the Lord.
some time building here. Worship team, come on down and join us. Grab a candle. Live stream people, I don't know what you're going to see or hear, okay? (laughs) Does anybody have an aversion to being, quickly, if I turn this thing around and show people our candlelights? on Facebook. Does anybody have a problem with that? Okay. Yeah, I think it'd be better if I didn't uh, use this thing, but I actually just moved it this way. How about all these beautiful people here? Huh? Got some more getting lit back there? All right. That was a glow stick if you saw that online falling. So I want to take just a few moments here while we have this this way. It was a challenging night to come out tonight. Challenging night to to see us, and here we are. And if you have a few moments, or as we have a few moments, if you have something that is a special memory, a special way God met you in a tradition, maybe it's a fun thing, maybe it's a weird thing, would you share that with us just briefly? We don't have everybody time to do a 20-minute life story. But if you take... 30 seconds, a minute or so, and say, man, we do this. Like one of the fun traditions at my house is every Christmas morning, my wife kind of started this. We eat Christmas Captain Crunch. Chris and I talked about that before. And we eat monkey bread. You know, that's always a special thing. And then we have a Jesus cake, and we sing happy birthday to Jesus on Christmas morning. Anybody else? You don't have to talk in the mic. Just share. Go ahead. Every year you visit grandparents for Christmas breakfast. Fantastic. That's awesome. I'm going to hand you the mic. You don't have a fear of it. Okay, so we always had a tradition in our family of putting up the Christmas tree the Saturday before Christmas. And we kind of got away from that. But guess what? (laughs) We're putting up a Christmas tree tomorrow. (laughs) Anybody else? If anybody here remembers Barb Thornton. (laughs) Barb Thornton. She's something else. Stop it. (laughs) If you remember Barb Thornton that used to worship with us, she's an amazing lady. Love her to death. She's living in California right now, doing well, if anybody cares. Uh, You should care, but she's doing well. Anyway, she started us on holidays eating lox and bagels. I had no idea what a lox and bagel was, but I trust her. And so I ate lox and bagels. Turned out it smoked salmon, but whatever, never had that, but I tried it. A holiday doesn't go by now, Easter, Thanksgiving, or Christmas, that my daughter, that's just our tradition, we, because of split families, she was with her, her father's parent, people a lot on holidays. And so ours is Christmas Eve. We 
do our celebration and such, and it's just our time, and we both jealously guard that time. So we will be worshiping together tomorrow night on Christmas Eve, and then eating. We found our smoked salmon today, our lox and bagels. So, <laughs> amen. We'll pass that around if anybody wants. Anybody else want to share? I'll tell you a cool Christmas thing that happened tonight. I saw two young ladies walk in this place, looking like popsicles with feet. And they walked over a mile to get here tonight in this weather. Not dressed appropriately either, I might add. So we'll be giving them a ride home. But that encouraged our hearts that they would want to be here. Encourage my heart. Somebody else. This is the joy we get every time Daddy comes home. Anybody else? If you're leaving a message online, we'll read them later. Y'all look beautiful. Y'all look beautiful. And I pray that you have a very, not just Merry Christmas but a spirit-filled Christmas that is full of joy in spite of what the world throws at us, is full of peace no matter what circumstance we are facing, that has hope that is based in hope in Jesus, not wishy-washy hope, and love that is Christ alone. Anyone else? Briefly. Keep your candles lit if you so choose. We've got one more song to do, and then greet each other at the end. We're going to keep the lights like this. Sadly, I cannot hold my candle and play guitar. I wish I could. Somebody want to come over and check that camera, see if we're on for the live stream? Probably needs adjusted. If you choose to clap your hands, be careful of the candle.
In a stable of all long In a manger called in dark Mary's little boy was born still look beautiful in the candlelight. It's not on screen. When we pray the benediction over you, we pray every week here over each other. If you know it, say it with me. If you don't, that's okay. Just receive. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you for coming. We'll be gathering at different places tomorrow night and Sunday morning. Please jump in and worship together with the body of Christ and celebrate the risen King. Amen. You can go ahead and kill the live stream there, Aiden.